Well, let me first. Uh, oh, I do it myself. Oh, perfect. Well, it's very appropriate to have uh, industrial policy conference uh, at Columbia because in the intellectual parent of industrial policy uh, was a graduate of Columbia University by the name of Alexander Hamilton, who is now a Broadway sensation. So, if you want to care about uh, a musical musical version of industrial policy, you might want to check it out. All right. So, this I'm going to talk about uh, a. a a, a research project uh, co-authored with uh, three other uh, uh, person with slightly different title is from the, how do I do this? No? You're not advancing. Sorry, just checking in with tech. It looks like the slides aren't advancing. I don't know if we have a, there we okay, go. Okay, all right, so, um, uh, and it's also popular perhaps to talk about Chinese industrial uh, uh, policy is the previous paper is the GS uh, uh, presentation in the morning uh, uh, as well because uh, you know China is in the, background or foreground of many presentations uh, in, uh, in the morning. And one area in which Chinese industrial policy has attracted a lot of attention uh, is its uh, pro-innovation uh, industri uh, industrial policy, offering subsidies to firms doing uh, innovation. Uh, and uh, you know, one of the uh, uh, often quoted data is that uh, by now Ch uh, uh, China uh, records uh, many more new uh, patterns in a year than any other country, uh, including the uh, United States. Uh, and, um, and Chinese pattern count, you know, uh, uh, clearly has experienced a leap and bound uh, in the last uh, few uh, decades. Uh, uh, and, uh, you know, one of it has multiple uh, pro-innovation industrial policy. Uh, uh, one of the biggest one uh, has the acronym of, uh, of uh, INNOCOM which has a budget which is, which is offering a, a big uh, reduction in uh, corporate income tax for, uh, in the judgment of a government uh, committee, qualified uh, uh, firms and the budget hourly uh, is bigger than, uh, than the uh, Science and Chips uh, Act uh, in the US in dollar amount. And, uh, and uh, two interesting features of this particular pro-innovation industrial policy is, you know, the committee trying to judge whether the applicant uh, for the subsidy uh, 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 has the innovative ability or not, and one way they judge that is to count the number of recent patents owned by the firm. And the other feature is that the purchased patent uh, uh, is also eligible in the application. You don't need to, you don't have to present just in-house um, patents. Uh, and neither is unique to China. For example, the second um, feature, uh, you know, purchased patent is allowed uh, uh, in um, uh, sub subsidy application is something that's uh, uh, a feature also shared by, uh, say, the largest pro-innovation subsidy policy in Europe, uh, the uh, uh, patent box uh, uh, policy. And the idea is, I guess, you know, the same subsidy, if the goal is to encourage more commercializable innovation. So if the same program can incentivize more firms, not just the firms that apply for subsidy to do innovation, why not? I guess that kind of intuition for why you can allow, you might allow for purchase pattern to be used in this. Um, and the justification for why you look at the count of a, of a, a new pattern uh, is that the alternative, you're trying to discern true quality of, uh, of, uh, of a recent innovation is, is intrinsically hard. And perhaps a private sector CEO uh, cannot really tell the quality of a pattern uh, uh, in, the, in its early stage, uh, and, and also probably you don't want to give bureaucrats too much discretion uh, anyway to decide what quality uh, is. For whatever reason, these are two important features, and we're going to uh, evaluate the role of those features uh, in the success or failure of these uh, particular innovations. Um, as, a, as a quick uh, uh, note, uh, you know, we're going to, going to call uh, inability to tell quality of uh, uh, innovation as a possible mild form of government failure to contrast, uh, to borrow terminology from a surprising uh, literature, strong form of uh, government failure uh, where lobbying, corruption then caused decision makers to deviate from social welfare maximizations or semi-strong form uh, government um, failure uh, where bureaucrats don't work as hard as the private sector uh, counterparts because they may, be, may not be uh, paid uh, as uh, uh, well. Whereas the mild form, uh, you know, talks about a issue that's that may not need to involve gross incompetence or corruption. So they're just being uh, being average. But nonetheless, we're going to argue they might have some uh, some uh, consequences. So here's a picture about 
a time series of a, of a pattern uh, count. Uh, so, that, so this industrial policy, uh, uh, we're going to uh, evaluate a 2008 uh, policy shock that dramatically skew up the policy and introduce explicit link between number of new uh, patents applicant firm has and the probability the firm will get uh, a subsidy. We're going to empirically verify this. And you see that 2008, uh, in fact, is a special, uh, it you know, shows up in the, in the time series plot of a count of, a, count of a patents that, you know, the, the rate of a uh, patent count uh, accelerates after, uh, after that. Now, this is an area, innovation is an area in which there is a well, underst uh, well, understand, uh, well understood uh, market figure, existence of Spielberg, and we're going to allow for that. Uh, and so, so therefore, we know with the market failure, in principle, some social intervention uh, could uh, raise uh, welfare. That's well understood. Also well understood is in practice whether this works or not, in, depending on the relative importance of government failure or uh, a, a market failure. There's lack of consensus about what the net of the two uh, is, uh, and here we want to assess uh, in this uh, particular uh, case. We're going to, uh, suggest that uh, in, uh, in this particular uh, case, this is the single largest pro innovation industrial policy with the, uh, uh, two, with the aid of a uh, structural uh, estimation, we, uh, we're going to uh, conclude uh, that this uh, program generates a return, a uh, social return of a minus 19.7%. Uh, and uh, again, within the structural model, if you only make one change, which is to allow uh, bureaucrats to be able to tell the quality of pattern, nothing else. I mean, this will lead them to only subsidize high quality uh, pattern, and this will uh, turn, uh, turn around the return. Uh, the return will become uh, positive 7.8%. Uh, pattern trade also play an interesting role here. So, we're gonna, uh, you know, as a secondary contribution, we want to argue there's a potential dark side of pattern trade. In standard literature, pattern trade we uh, understand uh, patent is welfare enhancing, uh, allowing uh, better uh, sorting between who does the invention and who used the uh, invention. But in, in this context, uh, patent trade could uh, uh, reduce the uh, uh, welfare. In fact, uh, if you uh, make it harder to treat patent, welfare loss becomes uh, uh, smaller. Yeah, Anna, please. I'm curious, it's not completely clear to me yet. Like, are you thinking of this policy as the, the problem is it's a poorly designed policy or it's not the optimal policy? Or are you saying even in a setting where you have you know, an optimal policy, you're interested in the fact that the bureaucrats who are implementing the policy are kind of average quality citizens? So, so we're saying um, you know, you know, counting patterns but, uh, but not uh, being able to tell quality is not unique to this program, it's, but it's a feature of the program. It's not, uh, uh, and, and this feature has very important uh, uh, consequence. You know, can you do better or not? We're going to do some counterfactuals to try to see whether there are ways to improve on the design or not. Um, yes, please. Sorry. Um, when you talk about the bureaucrats being average, above average, below average, are you talking about the Inocom bureaucrats or the patent office bureaucrats or both? Uh, the Inocom bureaucrats in this case. But how do we know whether the patent office bureaucrats are doing a good job on the patent examination? Yeah, that's a separate question, but I can report some. Uh, 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 yeah, they may not be, but I can, I, look, I can report some the following numbers. You can look at average rejection rate in Chinese pattern uh, uh, examination process relative to the U.S. They are comparable. So I mean, the Chinese uh, uh, rejection rate is slightly lower than U.S., but that's not what gives you. That's not you know. That, so the the dramatic increase in patterns not because. The Chinese patent, uh, uh, patent examiners approve every single application. Okay, so are they doing a good job or not? I'm just comparing to their U.S. counterparts. Okay. They're not that different. They may not be that different. I don't know. The, okay. All right. So the so the so the, the story in words is this. Before I go to um, a more more details, we're going to argue that uh, when it's difficult for a subsidy approving committee to to know the quality. Okay. Subsidy can dramatically raise the incentive for firms to devote resources to produce low quality patterns. Uh, in our structural model, low quality pattern would be those uh, defined as they don't, don't directly enhance productivity of the firms, do not generate spillovers. They become variable only in the context of subsidy because they can improve the chance of a firm to receive a, a, a subsidy. 
patent trade makes this worse because you know, without patent trade, only those firms that apply for subsidy might waste resources. With patent trade, other firms may also uh, be uh, willing to uh, waste resources uh, with the hope that whatever thing they produce can sell to those firms that do apply for subsidy. That's the, that's the sense in which there's a dark side to patent trade. I'm a little bit confused about the counterfactual or the notion of efficiency. Like, if I could tell in advance which projects are high quality, then I could make a lot of money. But the point is that that's not knowable in advance. Yeah, indeed. So, like, why so, is that an interesting counterfactual? So, this is to, to uh, uh, illustrate it's very hard to make it work. So, I'm not saying bureaucrats should know the quality. I'm saying just genuinely, genuine, because it's genuinely hard to, uh, to know the quality, and in this very practical context, this is by itself, this could turn the uh, otherwise uh, socially efficient program to be negatively termed uh, program. Okay, I'll just skip a few details. I want to, uh, I'm gonna uh, talk about the four sets, four sets of prominent uh, features of the data uh, and use that to guide uh, construction of a structural model and use the structural model to do policy evaluations and to do counterfactuals, including other things you can do that can make the program work a bit better. Okay, so I'm gonna skip those. Um, so, um, in, in, um, so here's uh, a few words about how the program uh, works. So the 2008 policy uh, shock dramatically, dramatically raised the subsidy uh, budget so that about 60% of firms that satisfy very basic uh, requirement uh, 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 can be counted on to receive a subsidy, so very high probability of subsidy, and introduce an explicit link uh, between number of pat new patterns the applicant firm brings to the committee and uh, probability of getting subsidy uh, afterwards. We're going to verify those, not just, uh, we, we, you, you can read this off from description, but we're going to verify this empirically as well. Interestingly, um, you know, the, more new, the, new, the more new patterns a firm brings, the higher the chance of getting subsidy, but all the way to, until you get six patterns. Going beyond six doesn't seem to help. Perhaps the bureaucrats intuition, you know, the, Number of patents owned by firm is a very skewed distribution. Some firms, you know, Huawei currently yeah, is the uh, firm that every each year records the most number of uh, patents uh, in China, thousands of new, new patents. So you don't want to give subsidy to a single firm. That's why you, at some point you stop, I guess, at the, uh, once you, once the firm has six patents, you go, okay, yes, you are innovative enough, and you, you stop. That's the, that's the future of the, of the program. We're gonna verify that uh, as, uh, uh, as well. Once the, once the committee decided uh, a firm is eligible, the firm, the, the firm will be awarded a title uh, 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 known as a high or new technology enterprise. High or new technology enterprise. The certificate is good for three years. In these three years, the firm uh, uh, is entitled to a reduction in corporate income tax rate by 10 percentage points. It can be from 24% to 14%. Very, very big uh, uh, financial uh, uh, incentive. Uh, and, and, and firms in, um, in a set of, uh, in, in eight industries, so, so the program targets firms in eight uh, uh, industries, advanced manufacturing, and modern services, uh, 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 that satisfy some basic requirement, having enough engineers, uh, spending enough uh, money on R&Ds. Okay, um, that's it, okay, so I'm gonna give, so, so therefore, you can imagine uh, conceptually the entire economy, the universe of all firms can be sorted into two big buckets. Uh, firms that are potentially eligible to apply for subsidy and those that don't. Each, within each bucket, you can separate it uh, into two sub-buckets. So among the firms that uh, maybe um, uh, could uh, potentially uh, apply, there are those who already, before the program, had six or more patents and those that had fewer initial patents. And then among the firms that uh, are not eligible to apply for patents, there are those who are in the uh, targeted industries and those that are outside industries. The reason you want to separate the two sub-buckets uh, in, in, in the second category is that those firms that don't, they are not eligible to apply for subsidy, but in the right industries, potentially can benefit from spillovers if the program inspires more uh, high quality innovation. That's why you, you want to separate them from the others. So I'm going to report four sets of data, uh, respectively about behavior of the bureaucrats, 
uh, reviewing the applications, behavior the patents, behavior the firms, behavior the patent trade. I only have 15 minutes left. Okay, so I'm going to rush. Um, so I'm going to. So on the, on, on, for the question about uh, behavior bureaucrats, we're going to make use of um, relatively unique data about, you know, uh, for one relatively large city, we know the scores the bureaucratic committee assigns to successful applicant firms. Okay, we not only know we know which firms eventually get a subsidy, but we know what scores, the numerical scores they receive uh, from the uh, committee, and the committee consists of local. Government Science and Technology Commission and the local text uh, uh, bureau. Uh, we're going to use the data to verify the role of a quantity of, 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 of a patents, the role of a quality of a patents, the role of purchase patents in the, the probability the firm will receive uh, subsidies, controlling for some obvious uh, uh, features of firm industry and so on. Okay, so here's a regret. We have we report two type of regressions: linear probability model. Uh, uh, versus the uh, uh, OS linking, uh, you know, various things uh, to probability of getting a subsidy. I'm going to just zoom in, given the time, because zoom in with one type of uh, uh, regression, uh, which is uh, uh, com combining both uh, firms, uh, with look at the old universe of all firms that potentially uh, can apply for a subsidy. So these are the firms that are in the right industries, uh, but also satisfy basic requirement like number of engineers, uh, Minimum R and D expansion and so on. Look at all of them, and, and a subset of them, about 60% of them, receive subsidy. So we're going to, you know, regress the probability of, uh, outcome of getting a subsidy on firm features, and we can verify. Give me maybe two minutes, or one minute. So, as you increase the count of new subsidies applicant firm presents, probability of getting subsidy rises. In fact, rises very steeply. Right. So, so uh, um, getting five. Pattern is better than getting four pattern. Getting six is a lot better than getting five, but going beyond six does not materially uh, raise the probability of getting, uh, getting uh, uh, subsidy. So, so count matters until it reach six. Quality, uh, we do, uh, so in column one, so our, we're going to measure for, you know, think of example, but two applicant and firms, each has a portfolio of patterns they produce, they present to the committee. For each um, pattern, we can compute subsequent citation count. So we can use expo informa inf uh, information to assign quality score to this. So two portfolio of uh, patterns potentially correspond to two different quality scores measured this way. And the, and the insignificant coefficient uh, in the first column related to the, related to the qu quality proxy means uh, quality doesn't seem to, higher quality does not seem to raise probability of uh, getting a subsidy. Now, this is not to say that bureaucrats should know future citation count. We're saying bureaucrats might do whatever they want to do, use soft information, talking to the CEO, trying to gauge the quality of the, uh, of, of the innovative quality of the firm beyond the count. Whatever they do, not successful. Alternative measure of uh, Quality is also, we think it's very interesting, that is, for every pattern, you know, in order to maintain ownership, the, firm, the owner has to pay an annual fee to the Chinese PTO to maintain it. Presumably, and, and the, the, um, the subsidy uh, regime uh, is such that uh, once every three years, uh, you can apply for a new, uh, uh, new subsidy, but when you apply for a new subsidy, only new pattern will be counted. So the old pattern that you have used is no longer uh, recognized by the uh, bureaucratic committee. So, so those patterns that in the minds of the CEO that are worthless will not be renewed. And we, can know, we know using future information can count fraction of patterns in a given application portfolio that gets renewed uh, three, years, uh, uh, three years later. Okay? And what we see so that in the second column, uh, the, the CEO <laughs> Uh, you know, insignificant coefficient for quality proxy means uh, future renewal rate doesn't forecast um, probability of getting subsidy at the time of subsidy uh, either. So this is, again, not to say that bureaucrats should know future re renewal rate. We we'll just say whatever they do, they, they, uh, they, 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 they are not successful in guessing the quality of the innovations. And we, we have a third way to do this, which is 
estimate marginal contribution to the firm profit as a way to measure quality. I'm going to skip that. Um, I'm going to fact number two. Fact number two reports um, a pair of uh, data patterns. On the left is the one you just saw that huge increase in countable patterns and 2008 policy shock appear to play a role in raising the rate of uh, 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 increase. The graph on the right uh, shows average quality of the patterns uh, in the country, uh, in the targeted in industries, where quality is measured by two ways. The red uh, is uh, citation count, and uh, blue is the renewal rate. So they respectively respond to, uh, correspond to other people's view of the quality of the pattern versus the firm's own view of the quality of the pattern. Either way, uh, same uh, uh, result, namely, subsequent to the 2008 policy shock, there's a very dramatic decline uh, in, the, in the average quality of, of, of the patterns. Um, fact number three is about behavior of the applicant um, firms. Recall I told you that uh, it appears to be the case that getting six patterns is very important in base our regression. Uh, 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 and the policy uh, was, this, was announced in the second half of 2007 and, and, and uh, implemented on January 1st, 2008. Number of patterns owned by firm, uh, uh, you know, is uh, you know, in the year before the uh, program, you know, it's, it's most firms own very few uh, patterns. Small number of firms own many patterns. There's nothing special about owning six patterns. Nothing special about the density of the firms that owns six patterns. Uh, the first year of the program, you see that uh, there's a rush to get six patterns. So firm clearly understands that getting six patterns makes a uh, very big difference in the chance of getting a, a subsidy respond to that. Please. Um, I was wondering regarding the quality of the patents. So, I mean, as, as you say correctly, it's very hard for a bureaucrat to know that ex ante. However, one widely used proxy that you can no ex ante is international patent families. So if I actually um, apply, or if my patent has been applied in two different jurisdictions, or even has been granted in two different jurisdictions, that's often used as a as a quality proxy for for patents. Is that something that you have looked at, or, and also did the did you speak with the bureaucrats? Did they know about this? Because this would have been an easy way around it by requiring basically these companies to be at least in one other foreign market. By that, they would prove that their patent is also recognized by another patent office that is not uh, the Chinese one. So, um, so we, had, we, we, we thought about it but haven't done it, partly because a relatively small subset of, uh, of the patents will uh, uh, simultaneously uh, be used to apply for international um, patent. But the logic of our story will be, if the law, if the subsidy law is such that you need to, you know, having an international uh, uh, patent uh, will enhance your chance. You're going to see a huge increase in Chinese firms applying for uh, foreign patents. Given what I described, the rejection rate is not that different, uh, in fact, uh, um, because, you know, the, even the USPTO, USPTO does not think it's their job to necessarily approve only high quality patents. They just they want to approve new stuff, right? So, uh, so that may not in, uh, end up solving the uh, problem. But we follow this. But the, so I want to uh, re re reiterate our third measure, which I think uh, is a useful measure because it gets at what you want, want to uh, get at, which is that for every patent, we can also estimate marginal contribution of that patent to firm's profit. That's sort of a real, uh, you know, a firm value-based measure. By that measure, 2008 uh, shock also result into a decline in quality. That, that is a decline in, uh, in uh, uh, marginal uh, contribution to firm profit average across all the, the, those uh, patterns. Could I actually yeah. have a question that sort of follows on, on that um, and getting to sort of I'm going to push you away to the welfare effects. Like a patent's not an innovation. A patent's a property right. And so, so the policy, uh, patent's a property right, so subsidizing the subsidy is, in a way, the patent and protection of the property right, the collective property right. And do we want, I mean, the aggregate welfare effects of encouraging firms to patent the marginal innovation seems like just the generation, it seems like the subsidy of patent thickets, which seems like a terrible idea. It's an excellent, excellent question. You see, socially, not all innovation needs to be patented. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
Maybe. So that could be uh, that. Um, um, that's an excellent question, and I, I have, you know, they may very well be right. I don't think we were in a position to particularly evaluate this here. Thank you. So I'm running out of time. The last uh, uh, data uh, feature is that if you look at pattern trade, if you classify uh, a pattern trade based on who are the buyers, who are the sellers, I'm just uh, switch uh, straight to a descriptive summary. The fastest growing type of, uh, of a pattern trade are patterns sold to firms uh, that are satisfied in the right industry, satisfy basic conditions, but don't have enough patterns to start with. These are the fastest growing buyers in the patent market post 2008. Okay, so that should be consistent with the idea that policy, the policy seems to matter and understood to be important by, 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 by the firms. I'm gonna skip those, I'm gonna, um, I don't think I'll have time to, so the structural model is going to, uh, trying to, um, uh, uh, you know, micro found the idea, uh, incorporate the feature that described uh, in, uh, in, in this, uh, in this in particular, um, uh, we're going to have firms in the right industries, firms outside the right, right industries, and we get, uh, we're going to allow for, allow for uh, spillovers, and the spillover, uh, so a given firm's productivity uh, has a, its own uh, comp firm specific component, but also industry wide component. The industry-wide component can rise with the number of high-quality patents in their industry. So therefore, ex ante, uh, uh, market failure is building that uh, in, uh, in principle, the program could raise welfare by promoting more high-quality patents and therefore by promoting more spillovers and, uh, and raise uh, firm, uh, every firm's productivity in their uh, uh, industry. I'm going to skip. I don't know how to. How do we get that parameter? Oh, we're going to do it in two ways. So, so in, in, our, in our calibration, uh, the baseline case, which is take the number from the literature. So this is the Bloom et al. survey based on essentially uh, rich country uh, data. Um, in, uh, in, when extension, we estimate our, ourselves. So it turns out our own estimates will be uh, the in, implied spillover a parameter that's lower than Broom and all uh, survey data. Okay, so our minus 19.7% number is based, uses uh, Broom et al. a measure of a spillover. If, if one were to use our number, the program will become, will have even lower returns. Okay, I, I don't think I'll be able to explain this uh, well. So, gonna, <laughs> so the, let me, I don't know, so on, only perhaps 50% satisfactory or 30% satisfactory. I'm gonna just describe uh, in words, uh, uh, what uh, um, so so this would be a, you imagine a static model with three stages. So in the first stage, firm decide to uh, innovate. How much do I want to innovate, and, and, and how 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 hard should I try to get the uh, uh, high quality versus low quality uh, patterns? In the second stage, firm have a chance to go to uh, patent uh, trade market to either decide to either buy or sell or do nothing. In the third stage, you produce and you apply for subsidy if you are in the right industries. If you are not in the right industries, you just count, uh, count the uh, money. Uh, um, uh, and, and so our um, uh, program evaluation is done in, in, in this way. So, so, so the models will be uh, essentially uh, 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 calibrated based on a set of parameters from the, uh, from the literature, a set of parameters uh, calibrated by matching uh, model moments with data moments. Um, the targeted moments look great. Non-targeted mm -hmm. moments look reasonable. So I'm, unfortunately, you don't have, I won't have time to give you the details. So here's how we do the, pro, uh, the program evaluations. Uh, you know, um, with those uh, uh, parameters, we can um, uh, first, uh, in the first column, you can compute um, if there, there were no um, subsidy program, what will firms do? Firm in each type, in each of the you know, two big buckets or four sub-buckets, how each of, uh, of them will, uh, will do. You can compute, uh, and, and then um, uh, what you find intuitively is that uh, no firm in any bucket will want to uh, in, uh, devote resources to low quality patents because low quality patents don't enhance their productivity. You cannot sell them. Market value for low quality patents is zero, so no one, no one wants it. Uh, and then you can, I, I'm going to define uh, welfare as the sum of 
profits of all firms in the economy. So they give you a number. Uh, with subsidy, okay, so incentive suddenly uh, change, you, 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 you find that uh, many firms want to produce uh, low, quality, um, low quality patents. Certainly, those firms in the right industries but don't have enough uh, uh, initial patents devote a lot of resources to produce low quality patents. It's less costly uh, to produce uh, low, co low, co low quality patents than high quality patents. It's important, many firms that don't otherwise uh, eligible to apply for a subsidy, including those outside the target industries, also uh, waste resources to produce uh, them because now the market value for low quality patent is non zero. When you look at some of the profits under the subsidy regime, subtracting the social cost of a subsidy and compared to the uh, welfare, some of the firm profits without subsidy, that's what gives you the return to the subsidy program of minus 19.7%. Okay, so maybe I skip a few. Uh, uh, you can separate the So I guess maybe the one, one important uh, uh, evaluation is this. Like, you know, given the structural models, you can do a very simple, we can, you can do a following thought experiment in a very straightforward way. Suppose, bureau, suppose bureaucrats can tell the quality of patents. So they will, they, only, they will certainly want to only subsidize high quality patents. And you don't need to change any other parameters in the model. In their case, the return to the subsidy program becomes plus 7.8%. That's because with uh, this subsidy, more high quality innovation uh, will happen. And because of the spillover uh, parameters, social, uh, social welfare does go up. Productivity of the firms in the right industry will, uh, will uh, uh, go up. And you can do various other uh, counterfactuals, including modification of, of, of the program. But I don't, I'm running out of time uh, to, to do conclude. this. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Then we need to wrap up. Yeah. Sorry? I think we have to conclude. Yeah, okay, so yeah. thank you very much. I'm happy to talk uh, over, over coffee later. Yeah.